Hello and welcome back to Two Chicks in a Horror Flick. I'm Tawny Ray. And I'm Felicia Connor. And today we're going to be talking about High Tension from 2003, a French new extremity, or no, is that the right word? New extremist? Whatever. We'll get there later. <laughs> Move, <laughs> movement. Movie. Uh, anyway, but before we do that, Felicia, what are you drinking? What am I drinking? I'm excited to talk about this. I am drinking Whiskey Neat in the little, little cups here. And we, we, like I have lots of personalities or something. Well, my husband's drinking it too. That's why I said that. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're drinking Buffalo Trace and we got this new single barrel select. And we found it at um, our Walmart, actually. And I guess Steve told me, my husband, Steve, in case you guys don't know who that is, um, told me all about it and how like you have to sell as a store or a bar or a restaurant a certain amount of Buffalo Trace in order to be able to get a barrel pick. And he was telling me all about the barrel picks and oh, all of that. Yeah. So um, this particular store has these single barrel they got to pick and and um my husband follows because he's a whiskey collector and a um a cigar collector and so he follows some groups and they were like oh my gosh people here where we live in arizona were like oh my god you got to go to this walmart because they have single barrel so he went and he bought like five of them i think four or five so <laughs> <laughs> i had to stock up yeah it's good it's good i like it what are you mm. drinking I'm drinking a little drink made with also Buffalo Trace whiskey um, and just some Sprite and Grand Marnier. Is that how you say it? Ooh, I love Orange Grand liqueur. Marnier. Yes, I love it's it. It's very good. And I went to the liquor store and they didn't have any, I thought. And I was like panicked about it. I was like, and they were like, yeah, it's been hard to get our hands on any of the Buffalo Trace. Like we've been out for like months and only getting a little bit in here and there. I did end up snagging a bottle, which was good, but. That was I was like, oh, no. But we can't buy liquor in the stores here because you had mentioned that to me that you had found it yeah. at Walmart. You can only buy liquor at the liquor stores here. Yeah. Yeah. We're all just drinking out here in Arizona. You buy it yeah. everywhere. No, you can't buy <laughs> Buffalo Trace everywhere. Yeah. Sometimes it gets hard, hard to find here and there. But like you liquor, I think every store, I think liquor. you could get it at like fucking Jamba Juice. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> That'd be nice. I'm also wearing a merch. It's a tank top and it's nice and soft. Yes. It's our merch. We have our merch launched in our store and loving it. Yes. So go check that out. We got some teas up. Um, I just said I'm going to put up some hoodies and stuff, too. So you can look yeah. at the hoodies when that when I do that. I was harassing Tawny. I love a big oversized hoodie like I love it. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, can we have hoodies? Everyone, I want hoodies. <laughs> She's like, fine, Brett. Let me put some hoodies. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hoodies and stickers. So, I mean, we have uh, two stickers, too. Yes. Yeah. Hoodies and stickers. I really kind of hoped that they had pop sockets, but they don't. So that's not. <gasps> that's pop okay. sockets. Yes. Do they yeah. have mugs? I think so. I want some. Oh, I'd have to look. Mug. Yeah. <laughs> but go I just check want that everything out. Because I've wanted <laughs> our merch for so long. You could put headbands in there. I don't wear headbands and I will fucking buy them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about it for a long time. And like I we mentioned last episode, real picky about the types of shirts. Mm -hmm. And anyway, We're very we finally sensory. found something. We want soft and cozy. Yeah. I don't want to be all yeah. stiff and tight and cramped. <laughs> Short, like short yeah. t-shirts. That's Ugh. weird. Yeah. It's baloney. Ugh. Anyway. Um, what else is going on? We oh we let's oh, do it. I'm let's do kicking it. it to you for our shout out. All right. I have an exciting shout out. I wanted to shout out Christine. I know we talked about her in another episode. She is a huge fan and she is an absolute angel, honestly, of a human being. Absolutely love and blessed that I know her and Tawny knows her as well through me. <laughs> <laughs> but she is our new Patreon. And so we wanted to thank Christine so much. Cheers to Christine. Cheers, Clink. Christine. Thank you so much for your support and your Patreonage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your patronage, <laughs> your Patreonage. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, and we have some exciting news about our fun October collab that we're doing. 
mm-hmm. with rocks, paper, salt. Side note, I was like typing up collab and I, I really wanted to put collabo. <laughs> and I was like, I don't really know if that's how you're supposed because I feel like when you're reading it, you have to put collab because people it's like the shortened version. Collabo yeah. is like a very specific. <laughs> We're not fucking DJs in here doing a collabo or music artists or whatever. So uh, anyway, that was I don't know what to how to write it or how to talk about it. I love it. But we're partnering that with them in okay. October. Mm-hmm. They're going to come on and be on our episode about uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street, which is oh, a little yeah. bit of a spoiler for the episodes that we're going to talk about in October. But you need to know yes. for later. Um, they're incredible. So they own their business, Rocks, Paper, Salt. And this is a custom craft cocktail kit that you can buy and it's sent to you. And they send you all the stuff to make these custom cocktails that they have created and they are so fucking creative and fun and i just cannot believe the genius so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to read to you from their website how they how they described this box be, and i didn't finish saying what i was saying so we're gonna they're gonna come on and they're gonna be on our episode we're gonna talk about that movie and they used that movie like as the inspiration for this cocktail kit and i'm so fucking excited okay so sick so, they, so sick I'm just going to read their copy, dude, because it's like the best. And I like I couldn't do a better job. Do it. So they said we are pumped on our October kit in honor of Halloween. We're keeping it creepy this month. We're doing a collaboration with our friends at Two Chicks and a Horror Flick. And we're dedicating this kit to our dear, dear friends, Freddy Krueger and Nancy Thompson from A Night in a Marin Elm Street. Duh. (laughs) (laughs) Inspired by a burnt, fiery child killer. The Sleepwalker is our smoky riff on an old fashioned. With hints of smoke, cinnamon, and maple, if any cocktail could dissuade Freddy from murdering you in your dreams, it's definitely this one. Drink up. Each kit contains everything you need to create four spooky-ass drinks, just add friends in your booze of choice, and bam, party time. So they will send, in this kit, um, their own small batch syrup, their own small batch bitters, their own small batch dehydrated fruit garnish, dried herbs garnish, cinnamon sticks, fresh citrus, a uh, rocks, paper, salt, Freddy snack, which we got to see a little sneak peek of. Yep. And it is also incredible. And a limited edition Nightmare on Elm Street air freshener. Stay awake, fast acting pill candy. I'm oh, like, where did you, where is brilliant. all of this creativity? I don't know. Where are you pulling it from? Skull shot glass. Prep slash recipe card. Um, with bonus fun facts on the back and you also get drink accessories rocks paper salt drinks accessories and a curated playlist a spotify playlist so this box i said this last episode it's a whole fucking vibe you're not just getting the stuff to make these cocktails you're also getting like a bunch of extra little fun stuff snacks and the playlist for the vibe so i'm fucking stoked and we're gonna be drinking these cocktails on the episode that they're going to be on. So we'll be able to talk about them and you can go and pre-order this right now on their website. If you go to rockspapersalt.com, you can pre-order. And I think as long as you, I don't know what the cutoff, but as long as you do it sooner rather than later, you might be able to drink it by the time that we're, we air our episode where we're drinking it. Yes. Drink with us. You can buy them all through October, but yeah, if you want to drink with us, pre uh, pre orders open. And if you um, are following us on Instagram, pop over there because the link in our bio has the link to their website, to this sleepwalker kit. Yes. Yes. So excited. Oh, fucking excited. And just so you guys know, Tani had mentioned it. It is like based off an old fashioned because Tani and I love whiskey. Um, But one of the cool things that they do is they choose drinks that you could mix with other liquors. So if you happen to be, uh, I don't know, a vodka lover or something, um, you can, there's other liquors that can be mixed with it as well. So I thought that that was pretty cool because they put a lot of thought into it. So, so excited. We're going to be unboxing that shit. We're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. I'm stoked. Me too. I'm I'm fucking, yes. I've never been more excited (laughs) about anything in my life. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Oh, I love it. Okay, I feel like that's the end of our announcements. 
are we ready? Shit, we're ready. To start oh. talking about high tension. I we're ready. I I don't know. I'm are we ready? <laughs> are you ready? Am I ready? I uh oh gosh, I don't think I've been this like excited and nervous to talk about a movie. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about it. I'm so stoked. There's there's not another movie that you've been more excited and nervous about. Um I don't know. Yeah, I, that's really hard. We've I've been really excited to talk to you about a lot of movies. Maybe it may be excited and conflicted. OK, I don't think there's been another right. one that I've been more conflicted on for sure. A hundred percent. I can say that. And excited, I mean, excited are... and conflicted. <laughs> these, are... <laughs> Those okay. are the two. these are both descriptive words I'm using for this. <laughs> these are bold claims from you. Anyway, <laughs> we'll just put we'll just put that on hold. Okay. I'll go through this stuff and then we'll talk about it. OK, so we're talking about high tension from 2003. Mm-hmm. The director of this movie is Alexand- Alexandra. I don't know if that's how you say it. Alexander, maybe. And then the last name is AJA. Aha is how I keep saying it in my head, but it might be Aja. Not sure. Asia? Oh. Sorry. I'm really fucking that up today. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> this director has also directed The Hills Have Eyes, oh. Mirrors, which I just referenced like two episodes ago remember i was like this reminds me of the new Candyman." this movie called mirror but it's mirrors plural um anyway went back and watched the trailer for that very exciting horns and the new the one of the newest movie he he did was crawl okay um but i haven't seen that i've only seen mirrors of those but i just thought they were like good because it's not a like no name you know like he's done some other really big stuff anyway yeah Okay, so cast, I'm going to fuck all this up because we got French names, obviously. Cécile de France. France? Plays Marie. France. Probably France. The France. France. Yeah. There's also a lot of like, you know, a lot of those letters Lines with the accents above the- and stuff. <laughs> Lines above the letters. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have no idea how to pronounce these. Uh, my when, maybe, is Alexia. And Felipe Nahon. Nahon played Latour. I don't Which know means what the that killer. means. It means the killer okay, in French. It? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, I was like, <laughs> didn't even look until right now. Uh, budget was $2.5 million, and so I just want you to tuck that away. I just want you to hold on to that information. Okay. Box office was $6.8 million. Okay. okay. IMDb gave this a 6.8 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 41%. Fuck. And... It, 84% of Google users liked this movie. Okay. Okay. Also, I'm going to be honest. I just ran out of time today, so I copied and pasted the uh, plot summary from Wikipedia. That's what kind of day I'm having. Took a little bit of a nap. Wikipedia, you know, those people work hard adding that content, you know? You know, they do. And it wasn't super, super long, I didn't think. So, okay, here we go. Two minutes with Tawny slash Wikipedia. <laughs> Marie and Alex... <laughs> <laughs> Marie and Alex are best friends on their way to stay at Alex's parents' house for the weekend to study. When they arrive, Alex gives Marie a tour of her house before they settle down for dinner. After dinner, Marie and Alex get ready to go to bed. As Alex sleeps, Marie lies on her bed listening to music and masturbating. Marie hears a doorbell ring and Alex's father, Daniel, wakes up to answer it. The man at the door is a serial killer who slashes Daniel's face with a straight razor. His head is pressed between two spindles of the staircase, and the killer shoves a bookcase towards his head, decapitating him. The noise awakens Alex's mother, who finds Daniel dead and is approached by the killer. Marie, hearing the mother's screams, quickly arranges the guest room to make it appear that no one is staying there and hides under her bed. The killer inspects Marie's room, but doesn't find her. Marie creeps downstairs and finds Alex chained in her bedroom. Promising to find help, She sneaks into the parents' room to find a phone. After hearing loud thuds, she hides in the closet and through the slats of the door witnesses the killing of Alex's mother as her throat is brutally slashed with a razor. Alex's younger brother, Tom, runs from the house to the cornfield, pursued by the killer. Marie returns to Alex where she witnesses Tom's murder from a window. 
Marie promises to free Alex, but the killer is heard returning. Marie sneaks into the kitchen and takes a butcher knife. Alex is dragged into the killer's truck. Marie sneaks into the truck with the butcher knife and hides there with Alex. He locks them in and drives off. When the killer stops at a gas station, Marie gives Alex the knife and sneaks into the gas station shop for help. When the killer comes into the shop, Marie hides and she witnesses the store clerk, Jimmy, being murdered with an axe. The killer returns to the truck while Marie calls the police but hangs up in frustration when she's unable to tell them where she is. She takes the clerk's keys and uses his car to follow the killer down a deserted road. The killer notices Marie following him and rams Marie's vehicle, pushing the car off the road where it wrecks. Exiting on foot, badly injured, Marie runs into the forest as the killer seeks her. Eventually, Marie bludgeons the killer with a fence post covered in barbed wire. As Marie inspects the body, he grabs at her throat, so Marie suffocates him with a plastic sheet and makes her way back to the truck. Alex seems terrified of Marie as she returns to the vehicle. As police investigate the gas station murders via the in-store videotape, the tape shows Marie murdering the store clerk. In retrospect, it is revealed that Marie is murderous, delusional, and in love with Alex and the real killer of Alex's family. At the truck, Marie unties Alex. As soon as she's three, free, she threatens Marie with the knife and accuses her of butchering her family. Alex slashes Marie's face and stabs her in the stomach before running into the forest. Marie chases Alex with a concrete saw. Uh, Alex finds a road and flags down a car. As Alex is climbing into the car, Marie appears brandishing the concrete saw and disembowels the driver. A stray piece of glass slices Alex's Achilles tendon. Alex takes a crowbar from the car's toolbox and crawls along the road. Marie forces Alex to tell her that she loves her, and she kisses her. But while they're kissing, Alex plunges the crowbar into Marie's upper chest as Marie proclaims she'll never let anyone come between them. Sometime later, Marie is in a psychiatric hospital room with Alex watching her through a one-way mirror. Marie grins and reaches for Alex, evidently aware that she is behind it, behind the glass. Yeah. The end. That's where we... That's where we ended. I want to say so many things right now, but I am not going to. It's taken everything in my power not to contact Felicia previous to this conversation. (laughs) (sighs) Felicia, what did you think about this movie? Can I please, I, can I please lay all my cards out on the table? I mean, I'm not going to talk about everything, the things I liked and didn't, but I need to, I, I've been waiting for this moment. Okay, put them out there. Lay them down. (sighs) The whole fucking time I was watching this movie, I was like, this is a five out of five. This is my fucking favorite movie. I fucking love this movie. Like out of control amount of curse words I had to say. And this is why. It was real scary serial killer shit. Like, this is why I lock my doors at night. This is why I look over my shoulder. And actually, I want to ask you later about it. Um, There were uh, if they took any inspiration for this character from serial killers, because um, Happy Face Killer and Ed Ed, uh, Edmund Kemper were the first ones that came to mind. But um, I'll check with you later. But this This shit has happened. This is real shit. And by those serial killers, too, that I just mentioned. So it was fucking terrifying. I absolutely loved Marie. And I, and I, I felt it was realistic how she was maneuvering and getting away. You fucking had me. I was like, I was so overjoyed with love. And then they're watching the video and I thought, I can't believe with how careful this serial killer is because he's fucking wicked smart. Like he's done this a lot of times because he really covers his tracks that he didn't take that video. It's her. And it was literally like slamming the brakes, like like slamming them. And I was like, what? And I'm like, wait a second. So I'm watching it and I'm like, well, well, fuck. Did she have that truck? Did she kill all those people? Did she know Marie? Was she in the car? Was she imagining she's in the car? Was she? I had all these fucking questions. And honest to God, so I loved it so much that I felt heartbroken with the (laughs) ending. Literally, like I 
well, you don't need that. I, I feel you don't need that. This is a fucking scary ass serial killer shit here. They're still out in the forest. They're still need help. Like this was fucking great. And then this, and I honestly think I, I feel like it was not masterfully done because when you masterfully do a twist like that, like I'm thinking fight club, is one shutter island um six cents for some people some people say they knew but these are movies where you're watching it when you do a twist like that when it's revealed i should feel if it's masterfully done like oh shit i fucking see it now right and then all the pieces come together and it actually makes you love it more with it shouldn't leave you like how i feel with a shit ton of questions like wait Wait, what? And so there you have it. I'm very, very conflicted um, because, again, the beginning, uh, some of the movies we saw like Raw, Possessor, any classic, you know, horror slasher, Hostel. There's that element like you were talking about, Tawny, with Raw, where it's still fantasy. All of those, right? They're killers. And you could say, whoa, if I was in this situation, how fucking scary but this was so real serial killer shit that it was so terrifying to me. And then the fucking ending, like I would watch this movie over and over again. <laughs> and I think I'll just stop it after she kills him <laughs> and pretend okay. the ending didn't happen. So that's how I feel. And so I'm very conflicted. I was five out of five and now I don't know what I am. Okay. All my cards. All of them. I Lay mean, them there's out. more stuff I want to say about the bits and right. pieces. Right. But Yeah. That's that's it. All right. I think now is a good time to break. I need to get another drink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's get into it. OK, we're back. I got my I got another drink. Before and I'm we ready. get into it, Tawny. Yes. If I can just say I didn't loathe the ending. I think. I felt like everything I loved most was taken away from me. That's what I feel like. <laughs> so you're not saying you said you're saying you didn't loathe it. You something more than loathed it. No, like I feel <laughs> no, like I didn't hate the ending. I like kind of where they were going. I mean, I understand where they're going with it. And but everything. But on the other hand, everything I loved most that I just mentioned about this movie that terrified me and made it so fucking good i felt like that was taken away from me yes <laughs> okay <laughs> listen i am happy with where you're at with this movie i want to say that i this is one of those times where i think i remember this movie being way fucking better than it was and as soon as i watched it and we and it was over i was like I regret my choices and I'm not excited to talk about this and Felicia's going to fucking hate it. Like that's where I was coming in. So the fact that you were like, I, you liked any of it. Yes. <laughs> good. Okay, good. I'm happy with that. I was like, I straight up felt like I didn't hate this movie even upon rewatching it. Like that's, that's not true. But I felt like I can't believe I wasted an episode <laughs> for no. us to talk about this movie. Like, that's where I that's how I felt. I was like, shit, I should have we should have done something else. But I'm glad that we're talking about it because I think there is some good stuff. Like I said, I didn't hate it the second time. And I don't know. <laughs> so that's where I'm like, I was like, fuck, Felicia is going to die because this is. <laughs> And I forced Jade to watch it, too, because remember, I was like, I think he's going to like it. And I, like, made him watch it. And he fucking almost left, like, 18 times throughout the movie. And I was like, don't, don't leave. I was like, don't, you have to just stick with me. We're, like, halfway through the movie. Like, you're, you're already halfway. And then we were, like, towards the end. It was, like, right at the gas station stuff. And he was like, I'm fucking out of here. He was like, I'm going to go in the other room. And I was like, listen, can I just tell you what it is? Can I just tell you what the reveal is? <laughs> it's her. It's, she's the killer. And Jade was like, what? And he's like, OK. And he stayed there and watched a little bit longer, left, came back. Anyway, I just the whole experience was this is one of those movies that revisiting it for me was not as. Was not as satisfying. 
But no. watching it the first time, I remember being blown away. Like this movie, I haven't ever watched it a second time. Like it has just stuck with me from the first time I watched it when I was like 14 or 15 or something. And I remember, I think it was just the twist ending. I think that it blew me away. I did not see it coming at fucking all. And it's because the movie, you know, there's two sides. On one hand, the movie gives it to you in the first five minutes. She literally says, I had a dream that I was being chased by this guy. The weird part, it was me. Was it, it was oh, me. Oh, shit, you're right. She does say that. They give it to you in the first five minutes. But also, they try really hard. The whole movie is a red herring up until the point that they reveal that it's her. And so they work really hard to make you not see the twist coming. So I, I feel like it makes sense that I was so caught off guard as a teenager watching this. But I even found a fucking article like as I was doing research in the title of the article was like high tension. <laughs> the twist ending is not as good as you remember it being or something. So I know I'm not alone in this. I'm not the only person. Yeah. But I think there are some still good things that I do want to talk about. So I'm just I'm I I'm sorry that you were heartbroken, though. That really sucks. <laughs> I but just I, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was I was just going to repeat what I said. Like, I just don't feel they needed to do that. <clears throat> I don't know, because um, you're saying that that's this, that's what really did it for you the first time you watched it. And for me, it was the opposite. Like. This is well, I mean, maybe because I know so many true crime stories. So this was so real serial killer stuff. This is what's scary, right? This is what we worry about. And uh, so that piece of it was so real to me. Um, yeah. So then when they did that other shit at the end, I'm like, fuck, no, no. I do still think this is like the one point that I think we're going to be on total opposite ends of the spectrum yeah. on. I do still think that the ending is what makes this movie, even though I don't think it's a great, great movie. I think it has some serious problems in the middle. It drags a lot like there were moments I couldn't I wasn't even really watching because it just fucking drags it's so like there are these scenes that go on for fucking ever that don't need to be that long you could cut like a good 15 fucking minutes out of this movie i'm sure from the bathroom scene the car chase scene and the like maybe just a little bit out of the fighting each other in the woods in the you know whatever they are at greenhouse scene it drags but i think the ending is what saves it because aside from that I agree that I do like movies like this that are like based in reality. You've got like a serial killer home invasion. It's all very real. That is some of those are some of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, this one just doesn't. I don't know. It's not as interesting to me until the end. Oh, interesting. OK, no, I love this. I think we will have a good conversation, even though you didn't like it the second wa watch. Because we are totally polar opposites in the sense like it, the overall feeling of the movie, I think maybe we're kind of similar. Maybe I liked it a little more than you did, but you really liked the ending because it made it. I loved the beginning pieces because it was things that I haven't been that I haven't seen before in scary movies. Like I've never seen. First of all, I love French movies. I love the French language. I love French. I love France. Did you? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> did you watch it in French with English subtitles or did you watch the English dub? Dub. I didn't know there was a difference. I just I just saw it on AMC. I think it was AMC app or whatever through Prime, through Amazon Prime. And they just started talking in English. So in English and okay. it wasn't horrible. I um, because they did pretty good, actually, with the voices, because sometimes the voices are so weird, you can't get into it at all. But I watched the dub. I do feel like they did a very good job of matching the mouths as best they could. Mm -hmm. I was really kind of impressed by that. But I do think that I don't know, I had this like Maybe this is a false memory. I kind of remembered at some point, I feel like I started watching this movie and it was all in uh, French, but I was reading the English subtitles. But maybe I fucking made that up in my head. I don't know, because I went everywhere that I could watch this movie and it was all um, dubbed. And I was going to message you and be like, if you can find this, the French version with the English subtitles, maybe watch that instead. But I don't actually think it exists anywhere that we have access to. 
So anyway, maybe you're I was remembering just curious. the pieces where they did for some reason leave it French with an English subtitle. Every once in a while yeah. they did that. And it definitely does sound better in their own voices in their own language. Yeah. I thought they did a pretty good job with that. But I liked Me too. those pieces where I've never seen someone, someone decapitated through the stairs. I like being introduced to these different ways of disturbingly killing people. Um, so, Me too. and I also <laughs> like things that push the envelope. I love that. Whether it's musical artists or I, I just, I, I, we've, I've talked about it before. I'm sure. Um, I really like that. So the scene where he is getting a blowjob with the head of somebody that he decapitated. That's how it is, guys. Um, I fucking loved it. That sounds really disturbing, but it's because <laughs> it was so fucking disturbing and like nothing like I've ever seen before. And and I thought it was well done. <laughs> OK, this whatever. I'm not going to apologize for myself. I thought it was well done, too, because you don't realize it. you think it's a woman in the car. Right. And then um, then he throws the head out and how they zoom into the head. And it's so disturbing. That's what reminded me of Edmund Kemper, because he did that with his mother's head in real life. So I was like, fuck, it's so disturbing and so scary. So I'm already in this this state of like, this is a fucking scary serial killer. And I'm, it, they're showing me things that I haven't seen over and over and over again. And I like that. Yeah. It makes complete sense why that would be your feeling on the movie. Like, even though I think I disagree, I didn't go into the movie the first time that I watched it with that thought process. And if I would have, I think I would have felt the exact same way that you did. You know what I mean? Because it is very disturbing. They are seemingly pulling these things that happened with real serial killers. And that's very disturbing. And then they just sort of like toss it out the window in the end. So I yeah. get how you feel that way. A hundred percent. I love that you said that. E even if you a hundred percent agree, uh, disagree with me. I love that you acknowledge where I'm coming from. <laughs> I hear you. I respect you. your opinion. You see me. I see you. I really you. see you. <laughs> and it makes sense. I also love that scene. And I remember, okay, so Felicia, I can't remember if we talked about this on the podcast or not. We probably didn't because it would have ruined some of the parts of the movie. But Felicia watched the trailer for this because I've been talking about watching this movie since we started the podcast. Like I just, yeah. because it stuck so much in my head as a movie that I really loved and really like blew me away. I've wanted to watch it for a long time. And, but I just don't remember like what, I remember moments of the movie, obviously, like there are some very visceral things that stick out to me. But Felicia went and watched the trailer and saw in the trailer that scene of the decapitated head blowjob and was like, this is fucking disturbing. In my head, I was like, I don't even think they use that in the actual final movie. I thought that was a scene that was cut. So when we start up the movie to watch it this time around and it happens like right away, I was like, oh, shit, it is in there. I'm like looking over at Jade and Jade's like, <laughs> like, why did you do this to me? He doesn't hate horror movies at all. Just for anybody listening, because we were chatting about this on Discord and our buddy Matt was like, does he dislike horror? I was like, no, he likes horror. He just can't get down on the like really disturbing stuff and like body horror is a fucking no-go he like will not sit down to watch any body horror with me so he was immediately disturbed and i'm laughing because it's just outrageous you know and then the next thing that happens is the dad gets i mean gore wise the dad gets decapitated by the dresser and in my first view brain this happened 75 percent of the way through the movie like i i was like shocked <laughs> that it happened so early i was like what where are we going what don't i remember about the, you know, sequence of events. But I love the disturbing and gory nature of this movie for sure. It is mm -hmm. what I think has kept it in my brain for so long, that and the twist ending. Yeah. So Steve and Jade would get along really well because um, the last episode, I kind of mentioned this, but in case you didn't hear it, I was super excited to watch this movie for a long time because of that scene. I know Guys, I know. But again, <laughs> pushing the envelope, they know. super disturbing. They know too. Yeah, they know too. Um, and so I was like, oh my God, 
Steve, watch this with me. Watch this with me. And he's like, and I'm like, let me show you a trailer. Oh my God, it's fucking crazy. And he's like, okay. So I'm looking for trailers and all the trailers are just like, you know, her running around and stuff like that. I'm like, no, no, no. There's a specific trailer I'm looking for. <laughs> and I play it and he looks at me where I almost thought we were going to get a divorce. <laughs> I, as for the first time, felt really uncomfortable. And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess uh, that's pretty gross, right? And I closed my computer like <laughs> I felt like there was something wrong with me. Um, but I'm back to myself, you know, and the, he he still loves me. We're still married, so it's all good. Oh, good. OK. <laughs> he would not watch it with me, though. I showed him that if there was any chance of him possibly watching it with me when I showed him that that was out the window. No way. It was he gone. doesn't like disturbing <laughs> yeah. shit. He doesn't like true crime. Yeah, JD either. either. I mean, he will watch some. It's really weird. Like, but but some I think he get he doesn't like the super detailed graphic, you know what I mean? Descriptions yeah. of what happened that he can't hang for. He'll like making of a murder or like that type of true crime type stuff. But if yeah, if it's getting descriptive or if it's too disturbing, he won't. He doesn't yeah. like it at all. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Did you, I'm assuming no, did you go back and rewatch the movie at all? No, no, I haven't, but I want to. Let me make a case for why I think that this was well done, at least in the first part of the movie. The fact that they are one and the same. I recognize that we start to really have a plot hole. I think Roger Ebert, I read his review on this. He gave it like one star and he fucking hated it. And he was like, he said something to the effect of like this movie has a plot hole so large you could drive a truck through it and then they do indeed drive a truck through it <laughs> like yeah. in the movie i thought that was funny yes so i i get it does get really you really have to suspend your disbelief and just be like yeah i guess sure you know like there's some definite fucking problems with that but i think in the beginning part of this movie at least they do a really good job of them being one and the same cuz the second rewatch i know what the twist is going to be and I can I can see it happening in front of me, like the fact that they don't ever see each other for a very long time. Like each time the killer is looking for her, he doesn't find her. And yeah. in the movie, they they kind of make it seem like it's because she's hidden well. But we know at the end that it, they're the same person, so he's not finding her because they are one in the same. The other thing is, I love the reactions of mm -hmm. Alex to her she's fucking terrified and the first watch you're just like oh she's fucking terrified and scared all over about what's happening but when you have the knowledge you watch her and she's fucking scared of interacting with marie so i think that's another thing that they did really well and that's the end of my list <laughs> unless there's something else that comes up as we're talking about it but i think those two things are well done okay I guess I can see that because I think at first when that happened, I started to rattle off questions. I'm like, wait, so does she have a truck or she doesn't have a truck? No, she has a truck. Does she know Alex? She doesn't know Alex. Does she go to school with her? No. Maybe she saw Alex. She followed Alex. No one knows Alex. Alex was never. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, does she know Alex? Um, no one knows Marie. Marie was never in the house. She just went to the house. She's watching her like I was just trying to put it all together there was just so many questions so do you think they do not know each other at all so that whole drive to the house was almost marie's um uh imagination or like a uh, fantasy of what it would be like to know alex because there's no way she was driving with her because where the fuck did she get that truck all this and the truck I... is real right because alex is in the truck so she can't possibly know marie and then what Marie, what leaves the house in the middle of the night and gets that janky truck with a bunch of killer people, the people they killed? I have always thought, and again, I could be wrong, that she did ride out there with her. She got to the house, met the family. She was there in the house. It, and I kind of have to then set aside the decapitated head scene as yeah. in her head. It's like a mental thing. I mean, she does... Or maybe she did. She does have to get the truck somehow, but maybe it's parked out there and she goes and gets it in the middle of the night. But I don't know. I think it's less. I don't think it's as. Um, 
th- this is what gets fucking wonky about this movie, and I get it. But I, I guess I always feel like the first part of this movie and then the end of the movie is like it's all in her head. Because like she the first time he shows up. Like actually there at the house is with her masturbating. And there is this whole like theme of her lusting after Alex. And so after seeing her take a shower through the window, she goes up to her room and masturbates. Right. And that's when he shows up. So I kind of have always thought that the decapitation scene is maybe not like a tangible in reality scene. It's not like actually happening. It's like her. That version of her sort of awakening, I guess, or like coming back to the surface, because it does seem like she's not um, consciously being this person. It seems like it's more of a dual person or multiple personality type thing because she yeah. continues to go back to to Marie or sorry, Alex. And she's like, it's OK. Everything's going to be OK. I'm going to save us. We're going to get out of here. And that doesn't seem to me disingenuine, ju- disingenuous. It yeah, seems like she's all. being genuine about mm-hmm. that. So which makes me think that this other side of her is like. Not she's not trying to be that does that make sense so 100 percent. yeah because even in the scene when she goes to rescue alex from the truck uh she she's i I love this actually i think that marie i think this is another thing i would have made marie my favorite final girl i fucking loved her acting i i loved her and but she couldn't be you know she's not well, whatever. But when when Alex was like, get away from me. And she was like startled. She was legit. Like what? Dude, it's me. So she yeah, definitely had a split from reality. And she imagines herself as this big guy, serial killer. Were all those women killed or no? Probably not. I think the truck is huge, actually. Because she has the truck. This is real. The truck is real. Right. Um, And because Alex is in it. So now she just finds this truck. But there's so much within the truck. The faces of all the girls that were killed. And like, to me, that's fucking scary. To me, um, a man uh, that this serial killer man that's going to get a blowjob from a a corpse and has all these women little pictures that's fucking scary not that oh no 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 none of that exists it's really just this you know beautiful um, woman that has a break from reality that's obsessed with one woman alex well i'm not saying that either i do think that maybe there is this collection of women that she has victimized but maybe it's not as like tangible as it exists as they're showing us it's like in her head kind of I, i've obviously setting aside the truck because the truck has to exist like you said she's in the <laughs> truck whatever <laughs> but you know what i mean like maybe she just maybe she went out there with uh alex i keep fucking up their names i'm sorry and she stayed there and then she went out in the middle of the night and found that truck like maybe it's not her truck but like those the images of the girls and what she would like to do to alex is like or like it's just a representation kind of like I think this is where I can kind of get on board with the I know it makes no sense I know I get it because of the truck thing but then like you know this is also how we read the scene at the end where they're fighting each other is that they're not physically fighting each other it's like a mental battle that we're just seeing play out as a, a representation You know what I mean? And obviously the movie is trying really hard to like have a twist. So you have to see them fight, blah, 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 whatever. But I that's I I feel like I can just be okay with it. If I look at it like that, I just have to turn my head and look away (laughs) about the physicality of the truck. There's a fucking truck. No, just kidding. (laughs) I feel like um, so I feel the opposite that I can get on slightly on board with it. If she doesn't know Alex and I can kind of see it. Okay. So hear me out. Okay. I'm listening. At some point she saw Alex, right? Obviously. If. Oh, I like this. Okay. I like where you're going. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. Oh God. I don't want to fuck this up guys. Okay. At some point she's seen Alex. Unfortunately, we don't know when or where. 
and um, has become obsessed with Alex. Maybe, maybe she is, yeah, I see what you're saying with the head. This is just her, it's the, like a depiction of her um, uh, sexual, what am I trying to say? Perverted sexual desire out of killing in all of that. So maybe that's just like, ultimately inside she's that depraved okay so let's just remove the head scene so at some point she's seen alex we don't know where so alex has never seen her and in her mind if she's uh, imagining and getting off on that whole head blowjob thing then she is definitely imaginative and so maybe she is putting her she's imagining this like what it would be like we can all do this visualize what it would be like if I knew that person and we were in a relationship and we were, you know what I mean? Uh, Who okay. even knows if Alex really did drive up and went to her, her friend, her um, family's house to study. We don't know. This is a fucking story that she's made up. She's seen Alex at a gas station, at the farm, somewhere. And so she has not been in the house. This has all been imagined. Um, she does see her showering. And, uh, it, uh, you know, and is turned on by that and then knocks on the door and then shit goes down because when she goes into the room, when Alex is chained up, you're right. And now that I think about it, Alex doesn't respond to her. Like, help me, help me. Like if I was in the room and Tawny found me, I'd be like, fucking help me. You know what I mean? And then when the ba- the kid is outside, I might be like trying to tell Tawny, like, fuck me, forget me, go save my baby or my brother, my whatever, go save them. Like I was waiting for Alex to do that. And she wasn't doing that. And I was like, oh, that's weird. But like, whatever, it didn't throw me off. So maybe the whole, the, she doesn't know. And then even, oh, let's fast forward all the way to the end when she was like, hey, it's me, it's me, Alex, it's me. And she's like, I don't know what you're saying. Remember, she said something like, I don't know what you're saying. Because if you think about it now, this murderer or the, and this woman has kidnapped me, has put me in the truck, has killed my whole family. And now is coming in as like, I've saved you. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? You've saved me. That then I can get on board with that. It was her the whole time, even though I do have to say, I do like it that it was a serial killer guy more, but I can get on board if she didn't know her at all. Yeah. Okay. I like this. And now I want to rewatch through this lens because it makes me wonder what the interactions between Alex and Marie were yeah. that didn't seem like they were, they could have been fantasy because it's easier to, to set that aside as in her head than the truck thing, because there is a real fucking truck. <laughs> There's a real fucking truck. <laughs> it's easier to be like this whole family scene was imagined and the drive out there was imagined. You know, I can, I can see it. I also want to just tack on here. The third point that I remembered that I didn't write down where I feel like there was a good moment between the two personalities is when the guy is driving and Marie is in the back of the truck with Alex and she's trying to talk to her like she's kind of trying to pep talk her. She's like, it's going to be okay, blah, blah, blah. When you know what the twist is, Marie or Alex is pretty much ignoring Marie. She's like yeah. not even interacting with her. She's like, and then that's when she lays down and she seems really like hopeless. Like, I'm just done with this. And you're like, why isn't she reacting to her friend talking to her? I think it's because she's not there. Right. So uh, this is another my third example of where they did this. Well, anyway, just wanted to toss that in at this moment. But I wonder. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I've never thought about it that way. Is all of that imagined? And I do want to say something about the head. So this is a uh, this is a you know <laughs> trivia note that I have. According to the director's commentary on the movie, he clearly states that it is not Alexis's head, but the kind of girl the killer likes. And if you take a really close look at the decapitated head, you can see that it has longer front hair strands than Alex has. Also, the eyebrow uh, and liniments. I don't know what that is. Differ mm. from each other. I didn't so think it's not it was her. her head. Yeah, I didn't think it was her head at all. I think I a lot did, of people definitely did. Thought, oh, okay. I thought that. Yeah, I let. Um, I like 
Mm-hmm. So it's a little sketchy, though, like the type of women he likes, because he has a lot of blondes on his. But I didn't think it was her. And I thought that did it was there anything about real serial serial killers that he drew inspiration from? Because Edmund Kemper did that. And he's like really well known for the really well known. Isn't that a horrible thing to say? But like, whatever. I mean, it's true. People know yeah. that about him, that he did that with his mother's head after he killed her. And then the happy face killer. Um, there's actually a podcast called happy face. And it's all about that. And he was a trucker that had women in his truck and, and killed women. And the reason that brought it to me is because his keychain was a yellow smiley face. Oh, yeah. I did not find anything about that. Okay. The only thing, but I mean, I'm not saying it's not true that that's a, I wish I would have looked into that or I wish I would have thought of that as I was doing the research because I would have looked that up specifically. The only thing I did find is that Alexander Aha, uh-huh. I'm just Aja, whatever. <laughs> and Gregory Levasseur, who I think is the DP, I think he's the director of photography or maybe the art director on this movie they are childhood friends that made this as an homage to the old school horror films of the 70s and 80s that they would watch growing up so Mm, a couple of just yeah i think it's more of a 70s and 80s nod than it is about actual serial killers but who knows again i didn't find anything about that but the couple of specific moments so one of them, the brutal death of Jimmy, was model, uh, modeled after the infamous axe murder in The Shining. And mm, okay. for, of our beloved <laughs> Scatman Crothers. And according to him, the scene where Marie hides from the killer in the gas station restroom is homage to a similar scene in Maniac, also from 1980. Okay. Okay. Because I... I didn't do I'm don't do any research when you're doing research because I want to be surprised. I did look, though, to see like the happy face killer and Edmund Kemper, like when when were they caught? And it was before this movie was made like um, uh, happy face was in the 90s. And then Edmund Kemper, I, I believe so as well. So it was before. And so I thought, oh, maybe maybe that. He took it from that, um, which made it scarier for me. But if he's taking it from The Shining, (laughs) not as scary. (laughs) But yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, it's kind of like, how could you not be? I don't know. Like, I'm sure that they thought, what's going to be really disturbing? And they searched their brains and probably there was a little seed planted about, you know what I mean? Like actual serial killers that they pulled from. Maybe didn't realize that they were pulling from. Also, this movie gets a lot of shit because it apparently copies kind of the same plot line as a Dean Koontz novel. I didn't write this down, so I'm sorry. I don't I don't know if I'm saying the actor's name or the author's name correctly. You are. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's called like Identity or something. I didn't write anything down. Oh, interesting. So Dean Koontz, he has a novel that is like very similar to this. I think it's like really similar plot wise. And um, I think they asked him again. I'm paraphrasing here because I didn't write I didn't copy and paste this information. But I think they asked him, like, why don't you sue? And he was like, he essentially was like, I don't want to sue because it's going to bring more attention to this piece of shit movie. (laughs) Like he was like, I do not want to bring more attention to this than there needs to be. So. Oh, There's that. shit. Okay. Now I want to read that book, which makes me more disturbing. I'll, I'll find that. But I wonder if quote. Dean Koontz, when he wrote that book, if he got inspiration from the Happy Face <laughs> Killer, I was so trying to make because she again, wants it. I want she the wants reality it. aspect. That because because that's what made I'm just like grasping at straws because that's what made it scary for me because there was no fantasy with it. To me in the beginning there was no fantasy because I could relate it to real things that's happened in reality. Um, yeah, yeah. it made it more real to me. And so that's why I'm grasping at that. That I mean it makes sense why he because I, I I question everything. So when he went down into the bathrooms and he was looking in all the stalls and he didn't find her. Well, it makes sense because he is her. 
Um, but at first I was like really, really into it. And I'm like, cause he looked at all the stalls. Then he went to the men's bathroom and he just peed and left. And I'm like, oh wow. He assumed whoever the one guy was looking at was a woman and not a man. That's weird. And then I thought, no, it's actually not weird because he specifically made a comment to the gas station attendant about the rich women that come in for sexual fla- sexual favors. So that's why he was assuming it was a woman and not a man. And so I was making all the pieces fit. <laughs> fit. And yeah. then it was, it was just like fucking out the window. It, was, it didn't matter. All that overthinking <laughs> didn't matter. <laughs> yeah. I do think this moment, this um, gas station restroom scene, I think it's uh, it's definitely too long. But I think this is where the tension of the movie ends for me. Like Mm -hmm. from here on out, you kind of like, I don't know, there's just a thread that breaks. And the rest of this is just. I'm like, get to it. Come on. I how did you feel as a first time viewer through the end of this? So. I real I did like I liked the gas station scene in the sense that um when she first decides to make a break for the gas station because I I like being I liked this too. in her shoes, right? Like do you stay with the knife or do you try to fucking go into that because then my mind's going there's one guy in the gas station. <laughs> like if he sees me, we're both fucking killed and but he has a phone. So I like that and then being a part of the decision. Um and so I re- actually, when I was a young teen, I used to read those stories where you had to choose your own ending. That just reminded yeah. me of it. But anyways, so I liked all of that. And then the bathroom I was I liked because I was wrapped up in her and she looked fucking terrified. The veins in her neck were throbbing. Her face was red. And I was like, oh, fuck. You know, so I liked all of that. And then she goes out and she's like, oh, fuck, he's not out here. Thank God. And starts splashing water in her face. I'm like, are you fucking crazy? He might be around the corner. But then that was fine. Then when she was, I was like, okay, whatever. It didn't take it out for me. Then when she was on the phone with the police, that was something, though. When they're like, well, where are you? And she's like, you mother. She didn't say you motherfucker. But in essentially, she's like, fuck you. Help me. And she hangs up. And I'm like, dude, they can't help you. They don't know where you are. Just go outside and look at the, you know, he drove away. Look at the fucking, you know, name of the fucking gas station so they can help you. And then, though, I talked myself out of that because I was like, well, she knows her friends is in the car. What if it was Tawny? I literally thought this. What if it was Tawny in the car? You're just going to fucking wait for the police to find you in the gas station or maybe at least follow the guy at a safe distance so you can at least tell the police where he is. This is a time of no cell phones. Okay, so I'm going off the rails right now. But this is how I think when I'm watching movies. So I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it because it was still this. I felt real enough like, okay, now she's in there. I thought it was weird that the killer was kind of like playing with the gas station attendant that apparently he knew because he calls him yeah, by his name. Yeah. This so is the one other. Them. Maybe he has a name tag though. Like I'm thinking mm. back on this now. I was oh, thinking shit. how the fuck does this, does he know him or she know him? If he's like a trucker, well, he's not a trucker because he just, he has a normal truck. He's not like a trucker, but if he passes yeah. through here a lot, maybe he knows Jimmy from getting gas a lot, but but is I it am. still her or are we just, yeah, like, I don't know if this, oh, fuck I don't yeah. know if she's a trucker, or, you know, like, no, I just think not. she's just a, yeah, she's just. You're like right. How does she know Jimmy's name? Killer? How does she know? But maybe he has a name tag. I wasn't actually oh, paying attention to that. He me might neither. have one. It did, though, hit me, though. Oh, he's going to go get the tape. And I fully felt he killed the guy. He's going to get the tape because. He fucking knew to check the water if someone used the fucking sink in the Dude, house. I and know. And he forgets the fucking videotape in a yeah. fucking gas station. So that I was surprised. But again, it didn't. That's a good point. Me. That's a good point. That's a very huge gap. But I want to say that I really liked that scene. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily on him, but on Marie. I mm-hmm. like that. Again, Obviously, we know by the end of this movie, she is the guy. But I think in the beginning part of this movie, she makes some really good fucking choices, which I love. I like when people are smart and they're like trying their best. One of these moments is that where she makes the bed and makes it look like nobody's staying in the room, hides her bag. She goes into the sink and dries up the sink. And then um, 
you know, she's like watching for the phone line to see where the phone jack is so she can plug it in. And I also liked that she was obsessed with finding a phone. It at on some level I feel like viewers can feel like this is fucking ridiculous. Just get out of the house or something. But I feel like this is what you would do as a reasonable human being. Your first thought is I got to get to a phone to call 911. Right? And eventually she finds out the phone lines were cut. And this is still while we're suspending our disbelief that she's not the same person. But I just thought all of these are really good choices. Anyway, on the killer end, him checking the faucet for the for the water. I did think, what if that's just a leaky faucet? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, but he did. He checked it and it was leaky, but it didn't. He still left. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, but yeah. he checked. So. I was like, this is a really, really smart murderer. Fuck. I would never think to check if the sink had been used, but I liked it. And I also loved how she was. When she started wiping out the sink, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm dead I know, at me this too. point. I would never think of that. Well, I'm going to think of dead. it now. Are you fucking killing me? Are you killing me? Are you kidding me? I'm going to wipe down the sinks <laughs> now when I'm going to hide. But I would have never. I would have been dead. I love this. And I think that that's why the ending. So I like yeah. it that you're moving me towards not hating the ending because I do feel a little warmth towards the ending. And that's what I was hoping you'd give me because I, okay. I liked it so much. <laughs> um, and on the flip side, I loved how smart he was and how smart she was as well. Yeah. Um, because I admire that because I would not be that smart <laughs> at all. No yeah. way. So what you were saying about the phone and the obsession with the phone, like, I totally agree. Um, you think just get out of the house. And I actually wrote here somewhere, just get out of the house. And then that was right before he had found Alex and you could hear him. You don't know what he's doing. I mean, he might not be raping her. Uh, at first, that's what I had thought because of she was screaming and stuff like that. Um, but whatever, he was chaining her up. Um, and so I, I was thinking, OK, in the house, just get out the fucking window, just get out of the house and run. Just fucking get out of there. Or, you know me, everybody knows me. I'm a bunker down motherfucker. So I was thinking, fucking stay. Don't move. He doesn't think you're in the room. Fucking stay curled up. He'll leave. Morning will come. We'll get the fuck out of there. And that's what I was thinking. So when she started to get out of the under the bed, I'm like, no, 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 no. Stay bunkered down. But then her best friend was fucking screaming down there. And I loved that because I was like, oh, shit. OK, I thought that was really well how it showed her conflicted. Like she did kind of want to stay hidden, but her friend needs her. You're just going to let your friend get like fucking slaughtered by this guy. So I thought that that was really good. And also with the little boy. But she didn't really go after the little boy. She didn't care. Um, but that was another thing when she saw a little boy running. That would be something hard for me, too. Like, I would want to be able to go help that little boy. Yeah, so that was good. Yeah. And I agree. I think that if you were in this situation, you would. Yeah, I think you'd be conflicted. You want to stay and help and you also want to run away and get help. But there's this fear that if you run away your friend is going to get killed while you're gone. So if there's something that you can do while you're there, you, I, I just get it. I think that's why you would feel yeah. like you should. Yeah. See, that's the reality of it that I loved. Like getting yeah. killed is your best option, honestly, than getting taken yeah. by this fucker, right? So I really like that aspect of it. Yeah. I think thematically... Uh, something that I think is the the obvious, like, shallow answer here is that this split personality of this killer from Marie comes out of a sexual repression due to her being, like, a lesbian. I don't know. I, I didn't oh, find anything shit. about that, like, as a whole, but I feel like that's always been even from my first watch, my takeaway. And I don't know if that is the intent. Like, I, like, didn't find anything about that. But I, <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like that was my, again, this is, like, the very first shallow thing that you can think of with that. 
But I think that's interesting. I don't know. No, I totally agree with you that that's interesting. So there's definitely a huge aspect, especially if you are into true crime, where this um, being sexually stimulated or turned on by killing and death and torture and corpses and all of that sort of thing, right? We all know the serial killers that love that shit. However, in the movie, they do hint at that. Absolutely. Because the whole time Alex is talking about this guy who is already with someone and hey, if they're taken, then that must mean they're worth it. I just want to say, uh, not if they're cheaters as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's just lay that out there. But anyway, she's obviously into men and all of that. And then she's kind of talking to Marie saying like, what about you? What about you? And she's like, whatever. And then she's watching her shower. There's definitely that attraction that Marie has to Alex that she has not let Alex know <laughs> that she feels yes. that way about Alex. 100% Alex is oblivious to the fact that Marie is into her. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with that. And then it's hard though, because there's that she's into her, but she must also be into the disturbing side that serial killers are into where they're turned on by killing people. Right. Yeah. There's gotta be a mix of that because that's next level. Well, and the reason I say Maybe. that she doesn't kill Mar she doesn't kill Alex but she's having those fantasies. So if we're talking about these are fantasies with the dictated head and all the women on the dashboard. So she's having fantasies of doing that shit to people then. And she's yeah. killing people, by the way, as well, because you, she killed all those you, people. If you look at it super literally, which I know that that's what happens in the movie, but I'm kind of thinking about it as like a very. Um, it's not like a literal thing it's like it, it essentially is just like the danger of repressing and like not being who you are can make you into a monster like oh i don't shit. know so it's a very vague like blanket again i'm kind of i'm kind of really extrapolating that from this movie Ooh, I, don't I don't hate know that though i don't hate that like if that they fucking made a monster though shit. I, I, mean, better, is, yeah. I better go journal <laughs> about who I am. <laughs> like, who the fuck <laughs> am I? I want to be clear on who I am because that's a fucking monster. But I don't think that that's a bad way to look at it at all. That's a very interesting way to see it. I could be oh. really reaching. And like I said, I, I feel like that was always kind of my takeaway from this movie, but I didn't find anything in the trivia or tidbits. And granted, I didn't get into uh, like what the directors have themselves said about the movie, other than it's an homage to 70s and 80s horror movies. But that makes me think that that's not necessarily what they were going for. But I feel like you can't help but take that away from this movie. Like, I just think it's. Yeah, I don't know. It's really kind of obvious. And again, it's like the masturbation scene. And that's when this guy comes and there's this like split personality thing where it's like. See, the masturbation and the killing, though, right? She's masturbating. He comes and he kills. There's she's got to be. We obviously know that she has lost her mind because she doesn't even realize that she is this man um, or that she has these desires. She has this, you know, this schism in her personality or in who she is. But. She is turned on by the bringing it back to the beginning in the the headless blowjob or no there was a head there was a <laughs> head knew, the this bodyless, was gonna be such a cornerstone corner cornerstone cornerstone Storn. the bodyless Storn. blowjob if that is her because that is odd if she's a woman and she's doing that doesn't make as much sense and i don't need to go into detail so if she's imagining that there is something very very depraved in sex murder death dead bodies yeah. right so um and i just don't want to think that that scene is just to throw us off and it's a throwaway scene i have yeah. to believe it's somehow entwined with everything so she's real fucked up 
She is a serial no. killer in the making. I have to believe she's a serial killer in the making. Alex is just right now. And with That's those That's a good point. Yeah, with those with those serial killers, they are obsessed with that person in the now until they're done with them and then they've moved on to another one. That's why they keep the trinkets, the you know, the mementos of the person they killed. Edward Gein I believe I said his name right, which uh, Texas Chainsaw Ed Massacre. Gein? Gein, Gein, yes. With the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, um, what there was pieces of him in there. Pieces. I didn't mean that as a pun. But he kept like fucking mementos, like <laughs> body parts and skin and all that type of stuff. And so there is this obsession with this one person until they're done. And then it's another person. So I, I like to think of it that way because it makes it scarier for me. Then it's just Marie and Alex. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. And I did think at first uh, that it was kind of just like a red herring scene. But you're right. Maybe. I mean, it is the first fucking scene we see of this quote unquote guy. Right. Who is the murderer. And so it has to mean something. But also sometimes I think like, are we giving too much credit to the filmmaker? Did it really mean that much? I don't know. I don't know. But I do think that whether or not they intended for this, the fact that we're having this extensive of a discussion about this movie makes me feel better about the movie as a whole (laughs) because you can read it in many different ways. And like, maybe they didn't mean for that to happen, but I think that's a good, I think that's a good thing at the end of the day. Like the fact that we can look at it in different ways and kind of argue about like, is this what it meant? Is this what it is? The entire scene with her family, her meeting her family, a fantasy or is the other stuff a fantasy? Who fucking no? We d- we don't know. We can guess. You've but- made me like it more knowing that this woman. First of all, we don't get a lot of woman serial killers. We get totally, them, totally. but they're killing men, right? There, there's some. There's a you know few. I'm sure there's many, but there's some few notable ones, and they kill men, right? So this is very provocative, I think. So if there is a woman that's having these feelings and these desires and these fantasies as what we, as a male serial killer, what we all know of many famous um, serial killers, I think that's a very cool idea. That's why I don't want to throw away that scene and I want to give them credit. And then if the director and the, everyone came forward and went, nah, that was a throwaway scene. I would be mad. Please don't. <laughs> Please, <laughs> Please don't. Don't ruin it for me. <laughs> you're, you're really right about that though. And I talk about this sometimes is that um, I do kind of wish there was more like female slashers. And there are like a handful that I think you could bucket under that term but it's not the same you have like a whole host of male slashers right michael myers freddy krueger charles lee ray chucky like you just have like the group and there's like only a handful of ones that i think you could consider as female slashers but they're not those typical types of movie they're not they don't fall under slashers a lot of them And so I I, I agree. I like the fact that this is like it just stands apart from other movies because of that. I'm fucking here for it. Yes, dude. And I'm fucking here for this, Tawny, because yeah, go. You tell tell me. I'm going to tell you. I just want to say, I mean, like, listen, maybe we could also argue about like, who is the real person? Is it this man and he's imagining Marie or is it Marie and she's imagining this man. But I just think it's interesting that if it's her, which I am assuming that's that's going to be my stance, I think, is that it's actually her. Yeah. And video. she's imagining. Makes- right. Yeah, totally. Oh, good point. Yeah. <laughs> We're just in such a <laughs> fucking anything goes in this movie. I feel like <laughs> space yeah. right here. But it's like she has to it's her brain, right? It's her brain that has to assign like a physicality to this other part of her brain and it's just interesting that it is a man and what does that mean for her and her thought process about her own desires and again like the sexual repression like does she have to be a man to lust after alex 
I don't know. I don't know. <gasps> oh, I'm not fuck, like Tawny. Yeah, maybe because Alex is into men. I mean, she makes that very clear because she's talking about guys during the trip. She's talking about sleeping with that one guy when she ditched Marie to sleep with the guy. And like, she's constantly talking about now, though, saying it that way, then Marie would have to know. Right. Or maybe, no, yeah. no, maybe not, though. She could be in her mind that probably a woman like yes. this would want a strong man. Totally. And that's what I think yeah. where I'm going is like, overall, I think as a killer, she could make the assumption no matter who she's targeting, that they are a straight female. And, or, or maybe it's the opposite. Like, who can victimize a female? Only a male. Not a female. I can't be a female victimizing, which obviously you can. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I'm obviously, saying I love but, this. But you know I what I mean? It. Yeah. I love it. I don't know. Because we don't typically think of it. No, no, no. I love this. I love this. This is inspiring me <laughs> so we have we have i love this idea of the aspect of she is a woman having these desires and thoughts and fantasies and depra deprave it depra depravities depravities that's a word we just made it up no, it's, to the no, dictionary it's real, i think it's a real word okay good we didn't make it up the merriam no. webster did but there is um a woman having these depravities you're right it's a real word that typically we see men right we do we do we see the men i listen to a lot of true crime and i know a lot of us do it's typically men that are doing these things but she's feeling those things that's fucking intriguing. And so she's identifying with that idea of what all of us have as an idea of someone who goes and slaughters a family, kidnaps a woman, uses her as a sexual slave and kills her. We never think of that as being a woman. Hands down. If you do, like, cheers. But like, I think majority <laughs> don't. They think it's going to be a man, right. right? But there's a woman feeling that. I think that's fucking intriguing and that I really like that. Yeah. And like, I'm not making any statements about like what that actually means or even what the filmmakers intended. I just think it's an interesting starting point for the conversation. Yeah. What is it? What could it mean? Is that what it means? What is this character like? Does she feel Shit. like, is she also feel like that as a female, I cannot be a victim. I cannot victimize other women. I have to be a male to do that. Therefore, you know, like, I don't know if it's even that conscious, no. but you that's great because she is a fit, beautiful woman. She's not like super, super built. She's like, she seems about the same amount of physical strength as Alex. She's not like, didn't seem super over strong. Right. But she's still yeah. able to victimize a woman because as women, as women, if I think about being, if I, like I mentioned at the very beginning of this episode, this is why I lock my doors at night. This is why I look over my shoulder. What I'm seeing is a man. Yeah. I am totally. not worried about a woman breaking into my house, right? In the middle of the night, I'm seeing a man. And so I think this is fucking great. 100%. And I actually think this is another thing that you just reminded me of. Everybody else's reaction to Marie, I think, is believable at that point. Because once you know that she is a, a woman, like the, the reaction, I think, especially from the mom, where she's just like staring at him for like way too long of a time, I think makes yeah. more sense. Because you realize like she's looking at somebody who she doesn't think is a threat just like yes. the father, you know, answers the door and stands there right next to the door because she doesn't he doesn't think she's a threat. So yes. totally, which is, Fuck again, yes. to say not that you can't be. Obviously, you can be a, a woman and victimize. And you know what I mean? Like, that's not what we're saying. It's no, yeah. but you can. No, I think that's a great, yeah. great way to look at it. You can be a woman and be just as 
scary. And we should scary, keep yeah. that in mind because you're exactly right. When I get scared of people following me, breaking in, whatever, same thing. I imagine a man <laughs> because, again, statistically, it is a man. But we should also be fucking <laughs> afraid of women just because they're women doesn't mean that they're not dangerous. That's right. right? And guess what, guys? If you've watched Children of the Corn, we should be fucking scared of kids, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm scared Fuck of everybody. everybody. Lock the doors. <laughs> Old people, kids, yeah. dogs, yeah. cars. <laughs> dogs, yes. Cars, yes. Oh, so good. So good. Houses. Donnie, those are great. Yes, houses. Yes. No, this is a really good point, though. Um, I really, really love this. <laughs> because we should, because we think of, especially as women, I'm going to bring, I'm not like going to be triggering or anything, I hope. But like, even when you think about, because this was sexual nature as a woman, um, being sexually violated, we think of men. We don't yes. think of a woman sexually violating us. So I think that is very provocative as well to think of it yeah. that way. Totally. Huh. And let me, let me tell you a little bit about the new French extremity movement. And the reason yes. why I just keep struggling with the word extremity, because to me, it means like an arm. Yeah, <laughs> I that's know. what I, I thought like, it meant, too. That's why I was like, OK, yeah, we're talking about body horror. Let's do it. So while the new French extremity refers to a stylistically diverse group of films and filmmakers, it has been described as a crossover between sexual decadence, bestial violence and trouble, troubling psychosis. Oh, I films love all belong- three of those things. I <laughs> me too obviously <laughs> which i think this movie i mean falls under all three of those and it says uh films belonging to the new french extremity take a severe approach to depicting violence and sex they talk to some guy who is i don't know like a film person and so <laughs> this person whose last name is the only part of his name that i copied and pasted <laughs> this was smith good luck finding him smith identifies five five films that he believes primarily comprise a new wave of horror in france high tension them frontiers inside and martyrs which we have talked about i haven't seen any of these movies except for high tension them all i know these films he says provide a comprehensive snapshot of human anxieties about our bodies end quote both corporeally and so- socially. Am I saying that right? Corporeally and socially. <laughs> Within these works, Smith d- identifies two predominant themes, home invasion and relatedly a fear of the other. So this is from the themes um, section on this on the Wikipedia It says the new French extremity bears certain thematic comparisons to the American exploitation cinema of the 1970s. Films like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and The Brood, she says, were at the time noteworthy for their adversarial relation to the to contemporary culture and society. In much the same way, many films belonging to the new French extremity have been explicit in their criticism and rejection of the bougie (laughs) of the of bougie bourgeoisie Bourgeoisie. ideals i don't know i actually don't know how to say it that's how you did there's bourgeoisie yeah okay films like martyrs inside and the frontiers for example have been noted for their subversive attitudes toward dominant political social and cultural orders Both exploitation cinema and the new French extremity are characterized in large part by their transgressive attitudes towards depicting violence and sex. Violence and sex. Yeah. Yep. You were saying that earlier. Like, yeah, I was in death. I was saying um, in all of these French films that we watch, these French horror films, that is definitely a theme. So. It is an American too, but when I say violence and and sex, it's different in French films where it is a, there's violence and gore and like a sensual sex. Like the, like when she was taking a shower versus, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like in American films 
where we are, there's violence in sex, but sex is just like, oh, you see a pair of tits. I don't know. There's something more with French films, with the sexuality of French films. Um, and the, oh, I think we were talking about this actually in Raw, the, just the realness of it and the openness of it's casual. We're feeling like it's taboo because we're American, but it's not taboo. It's it's real. I don't think I'm explaining this correctly, but there's this feel of it versus American films where it's like, hi, let me unbutton my shirt. Here's my tits. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's totally different. And uh, I love French films. <laughs> <laughs> the end we the need to end. do a bigger run of french film i do i'm very interested in inside and martyrs the two of yeah. those movies i've read a lot about i shouldn't say i have i've read about them i try to stay away from spoilers but i have read that a lot of people recommend watching them and so like they've been on my like semi list but i'm like nervous to watch them because they always get grouped in with the worst most gory extreme movies that you can watch so like on one hand i really like obviously if you've listened to any of our episodes i think you know that i like like gory torture porn like kind of stuff i don't love all of that i think there still has to be a story and a point to it but like i tend to like that kind of stuff but i don't want it to be so fucking extreme that it's just like shocking me for the sake of shocking me and i don't know how those movies land you know what i mean but it it would be interesting to do a larger run of these we should do like french february just because february starts with an f and i'm not creative (laughs) (laughs) like i agree i i love it i love everything that you brought to the table because at first i felt like they threw this twist in the end because they're like let's like fuck it up like not fuck it up in a bad way like let's like throw in this twist randomly and they didn't really think about it that's how i felt but after talking with you maybe there's more to it i still stand by i don't think they wrapped it up with a bow as much as movies like i mentioned like say fight club or shutter island or stuff like that where that was the point and you look back and go oh and it's really nicely wrapped I think they could have done a better job at that, but it has moved me more towards some of the stuff you mentioned where I'm like, okay, I I feel like maybe they tried to do that and there's some loose ends. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Even though we feel the opposite way on some things. Yeah. I think our conversation has also made me feel better about rewatching this movie and how I feel about it. I do think the fact that we've had such a meaty discussion on it makes me feel a lot better. I honestly thought that we were going to get in here and not be able to say anything. I was like, great. I was like prepping myself to make the episode about new French extremity because I was like, fuck, there's nothing to talk about with this movie. I don't know. Like, (laughs) I was like, what else can we talk about? to fill our episode time. So I'm glad. And it makes me feel better about the movie. And I don't, I obviously think it has some major, major, major flaws, but there are some interesting things. There are some interesting concepts. There's something to talk about at least due to the fact that we just talked about it for so long. So I really liked the, and I have to say, I liked that the flashlight was hanging there and he, I I liked now it makes sense because she was him, but having it be separate people that he tricked her like he was wicked smart and she was wicked smart i loved um the different ways to kill people (laughs) i love the decapitation like in the stairwell um i obviously loved you know some of the other disturbing stuff i also loved the um how she saw a fence with a bobbed wire and wrapped that shit up like because i think It gives you this, wow, that's who I would want to be in this situation because it's not who I would be at all. But you would want to be that person that's making these quick, smart decisions. And so I think you really like that about it. Um, So I just wanted to mention that because I loved her whacking him in the head with this bobbed wire fucking club. That was great. So good. So actually, and this is my last tidbit. Um. They so let me just read this to you. 
The film was shown at the 2003 Toronto International Film Festival during Midnight Madness, during the Midnight Madness section. After screening at the festival, the film was purchased by Lionsgate Films for North American distribution. In her book, Films in the New French Extremity, Alexandra West described the screening of High Tension at Midnight Madness made that section of film festival an unintentional bastion for New French Extremity, which still did not have a popular following. Following High Tension's release there, other films followed at the festival such as Calver, Shait, Shaitan, I don't know how to say any of these, and Frontiers and Inside and Martyrs. So that all came after this movie. In the United States, Lionsgate released an English dub version of the film in 13,000 theaters on June 10th of 2005. Um, and several murder scenes were truncated in order to avoid an NC-17 rating. A recut theatrical trailer was released by Lionsgate to promote the film featuring Superstar by Sonic Youth, which must be the song in it. But I say that to say that as you were talking about that, it reminded me the actual decapitation scene is much gorier. It shows the entire thing. So I think the version that you and I both watched was oh. cut. Did you actually see the decapitation or was it like a quick cut? Of Do you the, remember the dad? I saw it. Yes, I saw it. I saw the very fast, um, but it was but quick. I, yeah, it was super quick. Yes, I saw the um, dresser hit his head. His head snapped, and then it had changed. Yeah, it was quick. I think the original version is longer, gorier, shows more, and for some reason, I think the reason that I the the version that I saw when I was a teenager was like the full version which makes no sense i don't know how we got our hands on it maybe i'm making that up in my brain but like that and the bat scene with and a couple other scenes were like worse they cut those for the american audience so that they could mm -hmm. get the r rating so we didn't even get to experience this movie i don't think because we can't even access it in its like full gory entirety which is kind of sad maybe we should buy the dvd or something yeah, you know that the, the just that really quick scene of him in the truck, you know, getting his BJ seems <laughs> to me way fucking beyond some decapitated stare scene. Like they were like, let's truncate that, but let's definitely leave <laughs> <laughs> that. Like, really? Oh. They're like, oh, the decapitation scene? That's fine. Leave that in there. I forgot about it entirely. That's fine. <laughs> that's insane to me. Because that's the most disturbing part of the whole thing in yeah. my mind is that one very quick, beautifully shot, super disturbing. I fucking beautifully shot scene and very disturbing. <laughs> Just like, I want you guys to know that I, I also thought it was disturbing. I am not a fucking psychopath, okay? I'm not. <laughs> Okay, are you ready to rate this movie? I am. I am, I am. Okay. All, All right. right. So what I'm going to rate this movie, and Tani, I want to thank you, because <laughs> <laughs> I felt like something very precious was taken from me, and I feel like you were you have returned part of it. So okay, I appreciate good. that. I'll take uh, it. <laughs> I even though that wasn't your intention because you didn't like it as much but <laughs> you gave me back some really things I think because of all of the different things that the discussion the ways to look at it the different things that we thought about um, I mentioned I would have hands down if this was just like he was a serial killer and it was over I would have given it a five out of five one of my favorite movies ever um, but with the ending I feel better about it and there's some questions I have and uh, I don't want to read anything about it because I don't want to read anything where like, no, this was just a fucking throwaway because I don't want to have that in my head. I want to have the hope. So I'm going to give it a four out of five because wow. with, yeah, with the, those ideas and that contemplation and those possibilities like we were talking about of a woman having those type of desires and those, you know, um, you know, uh, perversions or or uh, or desires to kill and and that being wrapped up in their uh sexual desires and things like that like we would typically attribute to a man sorry men but that's what we're saying um that's what we're saying i mean that's the idea it's intriguing enough for me to keep it to a four 
Shit, he just made me rethink my score. I thought I had it on lock and now I'm questioning and I think I should bump it up because you're right. My big struggle with this movie is that I... I just, I think there's so much good. I just think the execution of it is not there. And I think especially upon rewatching, I think the Mm. moment that I watched it in time when I was like 14, it felt super, super fresh. And now it just doesn't like hold up the same way that it did in the, at the time. And so I was going to give it a three. Okay. Okay. That's not horrible. No, no, it's not bad. A three for me is it's worth a watch. You should see it if you have the opportunity to but i think i am gonna bump it up to a 3.5 for all the same reasons that you just said i think it the movie itself whether or not the filmmakers intended it can spur a lot of discussion and i think there's like a lot of themes that could be explored even if that's not their intent that i think are interesting and i mean the violence and stuff is like top notch love that gotta love that very gory Uh very that glass shocking. and her Achilles and like that. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about that. So gross, <sighs> so gross and painful. Yes. Uh, yeah. And the mom, like with her um, throat being slit, like that whole thing was really gross. That was another thing that was cut for the R-rated version of this. Is I think you see that. I think you see her get her hand cut off. Whereas in the American R-rated version, you just see a shot of the hand there, and you're sort of like, "Whoa, what?" You remember this? Yeah, that's how I had the feeling. I yeah. was like, oh, shit, or he cut off her hand. I thought that whole time, because you can hear the noise, I thought he was cutting off her head. But then we switched to her head and her head is still there. And I was like, oh, but then, yeah, it's her hand. Yep. Yeah. So it was just cut for the R rating. But um, all of that is very good, very gory. So I, I'm going to up it to a 3.5, which is the same thing that I gave the new wrong turn and um, the last movie that we talked about raw. Raw, yeah. Yeah. I legit am on the same. I gave wrong turn a four, raw a four, high tension a four. Mm. And I think I felt the same about all of them because I think there was things I, this is what's hard for me. I really fucking loved and I really didn't like. And so trying to marry the two was difficult for me. Yeah. Yeah. Even the plot hole for me is not that much of an insurmountable thing. Like I could whatever I could throw the plot hole out the window. I don't care. (laughs) I don't care about it, really. I mean, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And I get why people fucking hate this movie for that reason. I get it. But the biggest thing for me is that this movie, the biggest con for me is just that it fucking drags in the last act. It's just like, get the fuck on with it. And maybe it's because I know what is going to happen and I know the twist and I'm just like ready for us to get there. But I just think there's some pacing issues. That's like the biggest problem for me. But the acting is pretty OK. I don't know. Anyway, that's Marie where I was really good. I mean, those people look scared. You know what? I think I'm going to watch it so. again. I think I'm going to watch it again at some point. Hopefully this weekend. I'm going to watch it again, too. I'm going to watch it with the lens that. All of the family stuff like is is fantasy in her brain. And she actually is this fucking serial killer on the hunt for women that fit her profile, like whatever that fucking profile it is. And just see if that holds up. Yeah, I would love to hear. So I'll look at it from a different and from a second viewing lens. And then you look at it from that lens because I'm curious. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. No, I just was going to say like Eileen Warnos, like. Is that a point of inspiration for this? Like, I know she wasn't a trucker, but didn't she kill truckers? Um, Oh, yeah. The one that the movie was made, Monster. Yeah. Was made of her. Yes, 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 yes. She killed men. And I believe they they were truckers. They were truckers. Yeah. But she was a lesbian. And so, like, I don't know. Was that (gasps) maybe a point of uh, inspiration for this? Also, as far as real life serial killers now i want to read that was the movie with um charlize theron right yes where she literally physically transformed her look her yeah Eh, anyway (laughs) all right all right so is next what is next our next movie is going to be scream and we 
our inviting the distinguished guest, Josh. The distinguished gentleman. The distinguished gentleman, Josh from Horror Movie Crew. Horror Movie Crew is amazing. Sess. I've had a lot of whiskey. (laughs) The Horror Movie Crew is amazing. Seth and Jess and Josh are awesome. Um, We definitely want them all on the show again. And then, like, let's have each of them on the show. Uh, But for the next one, we're having Josh. And we're having him for Scream. So that'll be our next episode. Super stoked about that. Also, if you would really like one place to go to find us and to find all that's happening, everything we've mentioned, go to Instagram. That's our main hub. We have a link in our bio that will lead you to the cocktail kit, to episodes, to everything. Um, Just a reminder, if you're a super Twitter fan on Twitter, we are... Uh, two chicks HF. Everywhere else were two chicks and a whore flick. Also, please, please, please come join us on Discord. Tawny and I are in there and we want to conversate. We have some really cool people in there that are awesome horror lovers. So visit us, join us on Discord. No cost to you. Let's start the conversation and uh, have some fun. Tawny, what else? If you want to support the show, you can also uh like subscribe obviously but give us a rating and review wherever you're listening to us apple Podcasts is i think the most important because that's where the most people listen to us on or you can share it with a friend and you can also go to our patreon we have a patreon we have a couple tiers as of now that you can join so either way you get to yes be part of our uh discord as a different tier you get different perks so like a patreon shout out like we did for christine earlier in this episode Whoop, whoop. Yes. So check all that out. And yes, next week we're going to be talking about Scream. You already went over that. So anyway, you guys have such a good night. <laughs> check out our shit, our merch or whatever. And no nightmares. <laughs>